It's official. Scanning is the new probing. Beacon disrupted the industry, and this sealed the deal. It's the new eddy current scanning probe from Big Tree Tech, aptly named Eddy. It replaces the traditional mechanical or inductive bed probe on your 3D printer. Instead of probing a series of discrete points, eddy current probes scan the topology of the bed. This makes the process of generating a bed mesh much quicker and far more precise. These probes operate using the electromagnetic principle of eddy currents. The probe emits a magnetic field, which will induce a small electrical current in a nearby conductive medium, in this case, our 3D printer bed. The currents, called eddies, emit their own magnetic field, which can be detected by the sensor inside the probe. The strength of the magnetic field will be proportional to the distance between the probe and the bed. This fundamental principle of physics was first exploited for use in bed mesh generation on a 3D printer by the team behind Beacon. I made a dedicated video on that product when it was first released, calling it one of the greatest innovations in the 3D printing industry in recent years. Well, the industry moves quick, and naturally other companies have sought to replicate the success of Beacon. The cartographer probe is essentially a Beacon clone with a few differences. And then there's Eddy from Big Tree Tech. In some ways it's the same, and in others it's quite different. In this video, I'll be taking a deep dive into this device, comparing it to the alternatives, and telling you why this might just be the last bed probe you ever need to buy. If you enjoy it, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. For a topic as seemingly mundane as bed mess generation, it certainly gets a lot of coverage. I've personally made videos about many of the most popular solutions. Clicky, Tap, Beacon, and now Eddy. The bed probe may just be one piece of the complex puzzle that is a 3D printer, but its function is essential. Well, sort of. If you have a really flat bed and a perfectly square gantry, you may be able to go without one. The nozzle will simply maintain a constant distance from the build plate at all times. If your bed isn't flat or your gantry isn't square, well, good luck. You're likely to have both high and low spots in your first layer. High spots can result in loss of adhesion. Low spots can cause the filament to glob up on the nozzle. In either event, failed prints are a likely outcome. Using a probe, we can generate a mesh of points on the surface of our 3D printer bed. The height of the nozzle can then be dynamically modulated to maintain a constant distance, using the mesh to account for any high or low spots. On printers with independently driven Z motors, the probe serves a secondary function, gantry leveling. By probing at the extremes, we can determine the orientation of the bed plane in space. The Z motor relative positioning can then be automatically adjusted to remove any tilt, ensuring the bed plane is perfectly parallel to the gantry. With the gantry leveled, the first layer will be much more consistent. The mesh compensation is then just accounting for the flatness of the bed. Thermal stresses introduced during the heating process can cause an otherwise flat bed to turn into a taco. So in these cases, mesh compensation is essential to achieving a good first layer. Traditional probes collect height data at a discrete set of points. The more points, the better the resolution of the mesh, but the slower the process. Scanning probes collect data continuously, allowing them to generate a very detailed mesh in a short amount of time. The only real drawbacks with a probe like Beacon are the price and the form factor. At 80 USD, it's a premium option as compared to the cheap inductive probes or relatively inexpensive mechanical probes. The unique geometry and requirement to keep it away from any metallic objects makes it difficult to mount. Then there's Eddy. At $25 for the standalone USB version or $17 for the I2C toolboard version, it's cheap enough to make traditional probes obsolete. What makes it even better is that the form factor is identical to a normal inductive probe, and there's no keep-out zone beyond its own enclosure. It mounts the same way as the PL05 that is on the standard build of materials for a Voron 2.4. Eddy comes in three variants, which differ based on their connection mode, USB, I2C, and CAN. The USB Eddy is a standalone device that connects directly to your Raspberry Pi or similar the USB cable isn't rated for use in a drag chain, so this version of the probe will only be viable for use on a printer with an umbilical setup for the toolhead wiring. 
The I2C version connects to one of Big Tree Tech's CAN tool boards, either the EBB42 or the EBB36. The SB2209 and 2240, which are commonly used with the Voron Stealth Burner, don't have an I2C port. Instead, they have a CAN port, to which a downstream CAN device can be connected. This is where the CAN version of Eddy comes into play. It's currently unavailable, but is slated for release soon. The benefit of I2C and CAN is that no additional wiring will be required between the tool head and the main board. In contrast to Eddy, Beacon only offers a USB version. I tested both the I2C version, called Eddy Coil, and the USB version. The former comes with a 4-pin cable, JSTZH on the sensor side and DuPont on the toolboard side. The latter is supplied with a 2.5 meter long USB cable. That's a little over 8 feet and should be long enough for even the largest printers. We also get mounting screws, zip ties, and some cheeky stickers to give Eddie some personality. And of course, the obligatory rubber duck that comes with all Big Tree Tech products. I recently reviewed both the Panda Touch and Panda Revo, also from Big Tree Tech. You can check those out if you're interested after you're done watching this. In order to test Eddie Coil, I first needed to convert my Voron 2.4 to Canvas, a task I had been intending to do but never got around to until now. When I built this originally using the Formbot kit, I left all of the wires uncut, partially because I thought I might need the extra length and partially because I was too lazy to cut the ends and crimp on new connectors. This resulted in an absolute rat's nest of wires under the printer, many of which I was able to eliminate through the CAN bus conversion. For simplicity, I decided to keep the drag chain rather than converting to umbilical. If you're interested in a walkthrough of this upgrade, let me know in the comments. In order to install Eddy, we first need to remove the old inductive probe. Eddy has the same form factor, so it simply mounts in the same location. We'll put everything back together, then connect Eddy to the I2C port of our newly installed EBB42 toolboard. Before we get to testing, let's have a look at the installation process for the USB version. The printer I'll be installing this on is the Trudon 2.0, a mostly pre-assembled Voron clone. I have a full playlist of videos on it if you're curious. This originally had an inductive probe, at which time Eddy would have been a drop-in replacement, but I've since upgraded to TAP which replaces the standard X carriage and eliminates the mounting position for a probe. In order to mount Eddy, I designed a custom bracket that installs where the accelerometer would normally go. After printing, I installed two heatset inserts, screwed on the probe, and secured the cable with a zip tie. Two screws secure the bracket to the tool head. The cable gets connected, then zip tied to the umbilical cable bundle at various positions along its length. From there, it enters the electronics enclosure and gets plugged into a USB port on the Raspberry Pi, which I have mounted behind the front touchscreen. The firmware configuration is next, and that's another area where Eddy differs from Beacon. Beacon requires a standalone clipper module, which is installed through SSH via the command line. The functionality for Eddy is integrated into Clipper directly. For now, the only version of Clipper that supports Eddy is a Big Tree Tech fork but the plan is to integrate these changes back to mainline Clipper. A pull request is currently outstanding, awaiting approval from Clipper's creator. Until those changes are merged, you will need to switch your Clipper to Big Tree Tech's version. In order to do so, remote into your Clipper host. Add the link to Big Tree Tech's Clipper repository. Fetch the Eddy branch and check it out. If you refresh the update manager, you'll see that your Clipper version is now in a detached state. We next need to flash this new version of Clipper to all of our devices. This step will be required even when the changes are merged and Eddy is supported natively in Clipper. I don't know about you, but I find Clipper updating intimidating and somewhat confusing. So at risk of being pedantic, I'll explain the process briefly here. Feel free to skip ahead if you're already a Clipper whiz. To update Clipper on your Raspberry Pi or clone thereof, first SSH into the device. Navigate to the Clipper directory type make menu config, choose Linux process under microcontroller architecture, Q to quit and Y to save. Type make clean to delete any previously generated firmware files, then stop the Clipper service. And finally, type make flash to flash the new firmware. If you were successful, you'll see the new version number indicated in the console output. You'll likely also now see an error message in the web interface indicating that your Clipper versions are out of sync. To resolve this, we'll need to update Clipper on the other devices too. 
Repeat the procedure as before, but within the Make Menu Config interface, choose the chipset and clock rate that corresponds to your mainboard. If you're not sure what parameters to use, check the top of your printer config. Q to quit, Y to save, and we'll have a new firmware file compiled for our board. You'll next need to download the generated firmware file off of the Pi, using either your SSH client or via the command line using SFTP. Remove the SD card from your mainboard. Put the firmware file on it, ensuring it's named firmware.bin. Then insert it back and power on the printer. We've now flashed our Pi and our mainboard. The last thing to do is update the firmware of Eddy. This step will differ depending on the version of Eddy. Eddy USB has an RP2040 MCU on board. Enter the Make Menu Config interface once more, choosing RP2040 as the microcontroller architecture. Q to quit, Y to save. To upload the firmware file, first put Eddy into DFU mode by holding down the top button, then plugging it into your Pi. In an SSH terminal, type lsusb to determine the device ID. Then from within the clipper directory, type make flash flash underscore device equals, inserting the device ID. The firmware is now up to date. Lastly, type ls dev serial by ID and record the serial number. Back in the web interface, open printer config and paste the configuration reference provided by Bigtree Tech, inserting the serial number determined in the previous step. For any coil, the RP2040 is on the toolboard rather than inside the probe. By updating the firmware on the toolboard, you'll also be updating the firmware of Eddy. Rather than explain it here, I'll link in the description a great resource I found that walks through the steps of updating firmware over CAN bus. The process should be the same for the CAN version of Eddy. As with the USB version, we'll copy the configuration reference from Big Tree Tech, updating the I2C MCU with the name of our toolboard. In my case, CAN0. We'll also need to update the probe offsets with those measured for our setup and the mesh min and max according to the size of our printer and the location of the probe. Outside of this Eddy specific configuration, you'll also need to make some other changes to your printer config, depending on how you intend to use this probe. You have the option of using it for both homing and mesh generation, or just mesh generation, with homing reserved for a dedicated end stop, either a pin at the rear of the bed or a sensor in the tool head, as in the case of Voron Tap. If you intend to use it for homing, there's one important thing to consider. Non-contact probes such as Eddy are susceptible to thermal drift, meaning that the readings will differ depending on how hot the probe is. If this isn't accounted for, the measurement of Z-height won't be consistent across a range of bed and chamber temperatures, resulting in a poor first layer. For this reason, the USB version of Eddy includes a temperature sensor. A calibration process is required to determine the correlation between sensor readings and temperature. This procedure is explained in the user manual. Beacon also includes a temperature sensor, but it doesn't require separate calibration, as in the case of Eddy. Eddy coil doesn't have a temperature sensor, so I wouldn't advise using it for homing. In my case, since I'm only using Eddy for mesh generation and not homing, there are a few small adjustments I need to make. Previously, I had been using TAP on my Trudon for both meshing and homing. With a new probe defined, I need to remove or comment out the entire probe section of the config. Under stepper Z, I'll remove the line that defines the probe as a virtual end stop and instead explicitly define the pin that the TAP PCB is connected to. The Z offset will be determined using the end stop, not the probe. So I'll run the Z end stop calibrate command in order to set that value. Lastly, I need to add a zero reference position to the bed mesh section. This should be set to match the Z safe homing position. This configuration will ensure that the mesh adjustments are interpreted as relative and not absolute values, which is necessary because the Z offset is determined by a separate end stop and not the probe itself. As a final step, add the scan command to your print start macro. With Eddy, we only have a few different configuration options, probe speed, probe count, and horizontal move Z, which will determine the height of the probe above the bed during scanning. With Beacon, there are more parameters, like scan direction and number of passes, which makes it a little more configurable. All right, that's it for configuration. Now it's on to calibration. We send this command in the console to calibrate the drive current, then save config. Next, we'll be calibrating the relationship between eddy frequency and Z axis height. With the nozzle centered in the bed, we'll send the probe eddy current calibrate command. This will prompt us to jog the nozzle towards the bed until it drags on a piece of paper. The probe will then perform a series of measurements, after which we save config once more. 
If you have the USB version of Eddy, now would be the time to perform the temperature calibration. With all said and done, we can get to testing. Sending bed mesh calibrate method equals scan, scan mode equals rapid, will initiate a bed scan. Immediately, you can see the advantage of this probe over traditional probes. The mesh generation process is much faster and much more detailed. So that's all well and good, but there's another thing to consider. An important attribute of a well-performing probe is the standard deviation in its measurements. For Eddie, I measured 0.003 millimeters on 100 samples. These results were slightly worse than the 0.001 millimeters I measured with the stock inductive probe, and in order of magnitude less accurate than the 0.0005 I measured with both TAP and Clicky. Beacon standard deviation was on par with the inductive probe at approximately 0.001 millimeters, making it a bit more consistent in its measurements than Eddie. Despite the differences, these accuracy results are all perfectly acceptable, especially when the probe is used exclusively for meshing and not homing. Even when used for homing, a plus minus of 0.003 millimeters shouldn't have a significant impact on your first layer. And even though it's slightly less accurate than a standard inductive probe, Eddie's measurements, thanks to its built-in thermistor, won't change with temperature. So it's definitely the superior option. Despite having an incredibly high detailed mesh, the first layer tests using Eddy weren't any better than I have seen before with the numerous other probing solutions I've tested. This is consistent with my experience with Beacon. If the perfect first layer really exists, I would expect to get it using one of these probes. Maybe it's just me, but I've yet to achieve that. Even on the Prusa XL, where it's an advertised feature, the first layer is never perfect. So I guess more data isn't always better. But given the speed at which scanning probes operate, that makes them far superior to traditional probes, even if the extra resolution isn't necessary. If you were paying a premium for it, as in the case of Beacon, perhaps you'd be willing to wait for a slower probe to do its job. In the case of Eddy, the cost is comparable to the traditional solutions, making it a no-brainer, in my opinion, to pick one of these up instead. Now before we wrap up, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Beacon Contact. It's a soon to be released feature of the Beacon Probe, which gives it the ability to register nozzle contact with the bed. This gives it the functionality of tap for automatic Z offset with the speed of a scanning probe for mesh generation. For this capability alone, Beacon will reign supreme over Eddy. Not to mention the fact that Beacon has a built-in accelerometer, making it dual purpose. If, however, Big Tree Tech can figure out how Beacon has achieved nozzle probing and perhaps integrate an accelerometer while they're at it, all while maintaining the low price point Eddie could take the cake as the best all-around bed probe, at least in my opinion. But I'd love to know what you think. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my future videos. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing.